Hello, Runfire friends. Today is Friday, September 23rd, 2022. Happy Friday. I'm in the shop today and I want to talk about something really quick. Um, a mod that's going to happen on this Bruno number no. four from 1957, and that is shimming the bolt for um, reducing the headspace. So, uh, some of these old Brunos, actually, all the old Brunos I've ever had, um, suffered from a little bit bigger of a headspace than on a modern Runfire, and that I think is partially due to the ammo quality back then especially steel cased russian stuff that these were designed to also shoot and so sometimes the headspace on them is a little bit uh larger and so what exactly is that for example well that's the distance between the closed bolt face and the breech face where the rim sits and so there's a, a slight amount of free space that exists and so when you chamber around the round isn't held uh, very securely because it can still move slightly to the back of the bolt face and when it fires there can be a, a swell or a jump or something like that and so if you have a tight enough headspace or ideal headspace i should say and you close your bolt and chamber around it's held tightly with very little free space therefore increasing accuracy it can also aid in extraction and ejection which I've actually used that exact thing with shims to solve on a CZ457 early production that was plagued with bad extraction and ejection. Shimming the bolt face on the 457 is a super simple thing to do, same as this, and uh, worked like a charm. So this is the Bruno 4. I actually have one installed right now in the Bruno, um, and I also have a 455, my 455 bolt here because of the same. And so this will include instructions on how to shim the 455 and the Brunos uh, as well. Look for an upcoming video on the 457. I'm actually going to do Caleb's 457 and I got some shims here. So I'm quickly going to stop and say that I actually have uh, had a pretty good interaction with a company that uh, sells shims for the 455 and 457 and that's triggershims.com. Um, I typically have gone through Amazon and they've been sourced from overseas and my last bunch that I got uh, I had to order several different kinds because they were so problematic. Burrs, improper heat treat, thickness, everything. I had to use several kits to get a usable amount. So this time I went with a legitimate and uh, a reputable company, um, Triggershims.com, and uh, actually spoke with the uh, owner of the company who, uh, you know, how many owners hand label an envelope like that? And uh, my whole interaction with, with this fellow has been absolutely stellar um so anyway so uh he clearly marks the shims uh the size and their, their color coded specifications on each of these nice little envelopes and i've been into this one already so i'll show you guys kind of what they look like so hang on they're kind of they're kind of tiny so these are what they look like on a 455 and these folks one of the reasons I love it is they've color coded them. And so the color coding corresponds to the packaging. So you know exactly what you're looking at. That is super handy because the Amazon ones you had to measure individually and you lose track. And like when you're tinkering, uh, that makes for a difficult uh, or, a, or a longer process. And like I said, I got a double set for a 457. Uh, I couldn't do mine as well, but we're going to do Caleb's because he's got quite the rig and, uh, It'll be fun to go through that process as well. So look for that in an upcoming video. But anyway, the way this works is on a 455 or a Bruno, the uh, in this particular 455, the bolt handle is the lug. So as you close and cam the bolt down, um, this part pushes forward and uh, locks the round into the chamber. So the shim goes here, and what that does is it forces this bolt forward while the bolt handle remains constant because it's the lug at this pivot point. And you reduce the space here between bolt face and breech face where the round sits, in this case an empty. So what it'll do is as this rounds in the chamber, if I get that in there, I'll use a different one, hang on. I'll try to get it in there. Hang on a second. Okay. So as that rounds in there like that, and you close it into the chamber, when you shim it will close tighter, reducing headspace. That's kind of a simple way to, to do it, to explain it rather. And I would urge you guys, when I went to the range last, I saved a whole bunch of my fired brass from the different ammunition uh, types I was shooting. And um, then I compared them to unfired brass 
with calipers to get an idea of what the headspace was like or the free space um, for that rim and uh, gave me kind of a border, line, a border kind of idea on what was going on. So I urge you guys to do the same. But anyway, when it comes to installing these shims, it's super simple. You decock the bolt. So like on a CZ, you just decock it like that by hand. And then you do the typical, I'm not gonna go through each step for how to break down a bolt, but it's pretty straightforward. And then the shim goes here. Okay, I'll quickly show you that. And like, you know what, you, the advantage to a mod like this or a tinkering like this is you bring the shims with you to the range and you can try different shims as you go and play with different things to get an idea on headspace. So you have your shim right here and you take your bolt body like this and you slip the shim. Now the 455 is very easy to slip the shim on. The Bruno is not. The, t the t tolerances on the Bruno are much tighter. So you got to slowly work it on. One of the reasons I'm not doing it now because it takes a little bit of time to get it to fit. Uh, on my experience with Brunos. But the CZs are smooth fit like that. And that basically pushes all the way to the front here. And sometimes you just got it. There we go. And that becomes the new bearing surface. Okay. And so what's that done is it's moved the bolt upon closing farther forward to the uh, breech face. And then you would assemble your bolt as normal, like that. And it's basically spaced out the front part of the bolt and leaving the rear the same. Now, you know, triggershims.com uh, has some great um, information on their site. They recommend oiling. I usually heavy grease my CZ uh, camming surfaces, so that's typically what I would do. They recommend oiling. Um, they, you know, they sell these shims and then they offer a guarantee on performance on them. So. Um, I can't say enough about my experience with them so far, uh, so I urge you guys to go check them out if you're needing shims for um, your CZ or Bruno, and I paid for these shims, so uh, I'm not getting any sort of uh, benefit for saying that, but so far this, this interaction has been excellent, so they're definitely worth checking out. Um, so that's basically how you install it, and then you would put it back together as normal and you would test it. And the best thing to do is to start from the smallest and go up. And when I say smallest, I mean thinnest. And they are the smallest one here, thinnest rather, is the yellow one is paper thin, very, very thin. Um, I have the black in the Bruno right now. And so take them and you play with them, but always start from the smallest and go and then record groups as you go. And it's at the very least, it's a kind of um, an entertaining experience. If you don't gain any sort of accuracy, your ejection and extraction might improve, your ignition might improve. But at the very least, it's an it's an interesting way to spend an evening or afternoon dialing in your ammo like anything else. And uh, I've done it on several, and I really think that it's a worthwhile venture, even on 457s. Now, my 455 has an IBI match barrel on it, and uh, IBI has dialed in the tenon on it. So I don't need any shims in the 455. It's, it's ideal. But I quickly want to say that the correct way to do this would be, like on a Lilger barrel, they include shims. Um, so you can dial in your barrel tenon length shoulder this way. And that's the ideal way to do it. However, on a Bruno, it's threaded. A lot more complicated. You have to take it out, turn down the shoulder, and get the, you know, play with it that way. It's not as easy as putting some shims on. But that's the ideal way to do this. This is, the, let's call it the poor man's way to do it. But the benefits are the same, and they are there. So anyway, tomorrow I'm going to be taking this out to the range. Be shooting the best selection of ammo from last week in it, the ones that I had the best success with, and uh, we're gonna go with that. We're gonna play with some shims and see what we can get out of it. Um, so stay tuned for tomorrow's video. But if not, any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer them as always. And um, if not, I'll catch you guys in the next one.